Hey guys, how's it going? This is Watch, and in this video, we're doing a really unique comparison between the 5K iMac and my very own Hackintosh. Now, I've actually paired this Hackintosh with a Dell 4K monitor, and uh, this is certainly a unique comparison in the sense that we're uh, testing out a uh, all-in-one desktop PC, such as in the iMac, that has a highest uh, resolution that you can get in any desktop uh, display possible built into the iMac, which is that beautiful 5K display. And we're kind of comparing against the 28 inch uh, 4K monitor from Dell match with the hardware that I've selected to make my Hackintosh. Now we're going to get into some specifics in terms of what kind of components I put into my Hackintosh, but you, what we're going to be really interested to see is how much more you get for your money if you go this route of building your own Hackintosh and uh, pairing it up with a uh, 4K display. Now certainly you don't have the advantage of having a nice, neat, uh, compact solution such as you get in the 5K iMac. Mac, but let's see how much performance you get uh, compared uh, to the convenience. Now first off we're going to be talking about the 4K monitor that I'm using for my Hackintosh which is the Dell P2815Q. This is a full 4K monitor which has a native resolution of 3840 by 2160 which certainly is not high as the 5120 by 2880 on the 5K iMac but it, they're both LED backlit and they both have really good representative color representations as you see from the uh, different images displayed on both monitors. Both look really great when you are looking at at them straight on. Now the cool thing about the iMac is that it is IPS certified so you can view it at pretty much any angle and there's no uh, dimming in terms of brightness as well. Now this specific 4K monitor from Dell was actually released uh, late last year and it's one of the first 4K monitors ever to be released by a major company. And with that kind of first generation status you're kind of missing a couple of things. Firstly it only has 30 Hertz refresh rate at the full 3840 by 2160 resolution and it is a TN panel it's not an IPS panel now uh, these days you can for around a couple hundred dollars more than what this Dell costs you can get a uh, full 60 Hertz panel at 4k uh, but uh, getting IPS is certainly going to drive up the cost so in terms of the display quality itself uh, certainly the 5k iMac is not only higher resolution but it has better overall features and capabilities now that being said there's absolutely nothing wrong with the P2815Q it looks great in terms of uh, different lighting condition. It has a matte screen, which is uh, definitely better if you're in a brightly lit condition because the iMac has that glass uh, screen, which definitely has some more glare issues. But in terms of as you're watching over here, the image quality is certainly up there when you're watching movies and uh, even uh, editing photos and things like that. So it's definitely an excellent 4K uh, display, especially if you're on a budget. Now moving forward, we're going to talk about the internal specifications specifications on uh, both computers. Now obviously I built the Hackintosh with specific parts. We're going to go over the specific parts but I'm actually using the uh, old uh, Prodigy case from BitPhoenix which is kind of a little Mac Pro in terms of its design. You're kind of restricted in terms of what kind of parts you can use but it's a nice little compact uh, computer that you can build and put really high-end components in there and that's what we've done. Looking at the processors themselves we have a Core i7-4770K on the Hackintosh that has four core with eight threads. It has hyper threading technology. That's what the uh, desktop Core i7s have compared to the Core i5s that is in the iMac. Now the iMac is specifically running with a Core i5-4690 that has uh, four cores and four threads. Now you can get the upgraded i7 version on the iMac. It is going to drive up the price a little bit, but uh, this specific version is that baseline configuration. Additionally, in terms of RAM, we have 16 uh, gigabytes of DDR3 on our Hackintosh and eight gigabytes on the baseline configuration of the 5k iMac. Now the cool thing is in both regards you can actually upgrade the memory up to a certain level depending upon what your motherboard specifically supports and even on the iMac you can open the back and upgrade the memory up to 32 gigabytes. Now just to test the performance differences between uh, the CPUs we're going to go ahead and run Cinebench R15 benchmark which is going to specifically test our CPUs and we can certainly expect to see a much higher score on our 4k Hackintosh because it again
again, has hyper-threading, so it's literally double the threads that are happening in the Core i5, and we have a higher score of about 822 versus 532 on the 5K iMac. Now, moving forward, we're also going to take a look at Geekbench and see how they compare against each other. This is, again, going to test the RAM and the CPU configurations, and again, we have a much higher score on our Hackintosh thanks to its uh, higher level of RAM and uh, that faster CPU. Now, the new 5K iMac actually comes stock with a Fusion hard drive, which is a hybrid hard drive that has a 128 gig SSD, which is PCI based, and a standard uh, 7200 RPM hard drive that is one terabyte in capacity. You can obviously upgrade it uh, to get more space out of it and potentially even higher speeds. But I've kind of matched that configuration by using a, a 128 gigabyte SSD from Samsung and a one terabyte 7200 RPM from Western Digital. Now, taking a look at the results of my Blackmagic speed test, you can see that the Fusion hard drive is certainly a little bit faster. It's going way over 600 megabytes per second in terms of read and around 300 in terms of write versus we're getting around 480 to 450 both in terms of read and write on our 4K Hackintosh. Now, the main reason for that is that the 5K iMac is actually using a flash drive that's connected via the PCI Express connection, which is a higher throughput, higher bandwidth than the SATA 3 connection that our Samsung Evo drive is interfacing with and based on that kind of interface you are going to get faster speeds and faster startup times on the 5k iMac uh, compared to any Hackintosh. Now moving on to some of the graphical capabilities of both computers, the stock 5K iMac comes with a AMD Radeon R9 290X with a 2 gigabytes of GDDR5. And one thing we have to keep in mind is that this GPU is specifically geared to work really well with Mac OS X. It is uh, supporting OpenCL standards and OS X really uh, utilizes that quite well, especially applications such as Final Cut X for video editing. Now the GPU on our Hackintosh is certainly uh, no slum. It is a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 780 and ha that has 3 gigabytes of GDDR5. So not only do we have more video RAM, but the overall GPU should be uh, faster as well. And uh, based on some of those specifications, we're going to take a look at some GPU benchmarks. We're going to be using the Valley benchmark. We're going to render our benchmark in uh, 1080p at uh, fairly decent quality settings. Now we can uh, do it in 4K, but uh, both these GPUs, uh, although they can run 4K, you do have to put down uh, the quality settings quite a bit and even in that case uh, the frame rate is a little bit more lackluster. So let's go ahead and uh, run the benchmark in 1080p and see what you get. Now reviewing the score you can see that our uh, 780 definitely beat out the AMD R90X uh, that's in the 5k iMac getting a very impressive score about 67.4 frames per second uh, that is definitely a lot higher than the 44.7 frames per second that you're getting on the R9 290X. Now, now, one thing is certain that the uh, Udigen uh, benchmark definitely favors a uh, graphics card that excel in OpenCL uh, based applications, and uh, that's certainly the case with NVIDIA cards. But one thing is certain is when you use an application that uh, really excels and utilizes OpenCL really well, which the AMD cards do quite well, you're actually going to see an increase in performance in the, the 290X, and that's the case. When we take a look at some of my export time results, you can see that the 5K iMac is just a couple of seconds uh, faster than what we're doing on the 4K iMac, getting about 1 minute and 28 seconds for my 4K project versus a minute and 44 seconds on my 4K Hackintosh, which is certainly not bad, but uh, the software integration on Final Cut X really works well with a native Apple hardware. Now, these results are certainly not reflected when we take a look at rendering times in After Effects. Uh, Adobe suite of products will certainly favor the higher performing uh, Hackintosh, and you can see over here that my After Effects project that is rendered in 4K uh, basically finished uh, quite a bit faster than it did in the 5K iMac, and that's attributed to the higher level of RAM. We have double the amount of RAM and uh, the much faster CPU, and certainly the GPU helps out here and there as well. Furthermore, I did a test in Premiere Pro rendering five 1080p uh, clips with a whole bunch of different color correction and effects, and put all that footage on a 5K timeline 
line and my export time on the Hackintosh is certainly a lot faster at 2 minutes 21 seconds versus 2 minutes 43 seconds on the 5k iMac. Now furthermore if you do kind of have any music production or perhaps some sound mixing and things like that and I like to use an audio application such as Logic X for most of my music production and things like that and I did notice while rendering out a, a three and a half minute song that it only took about one minute two seconds on my Hackintosh versus one minute 18 seconds on the 5k iMac. Now lastly one of the reasons why a lot of people would want to get such a high resolution monitor uh, not only for the desktop real estate but really for the photo editing potentials of uh, both of these two displays and certainly uh, both of them have excellent uh, presentation in terms of editing photos so if you do a lot of Lightroom and Photoshop work it's excellent but in terms of the rendering times itself I exported a, a couple of raw files out to JPEG. The full exporting time took only about 12 seconds on my Hackintosh versus 18 seconds on the 5k iMac. Now just to go over some of our benchmark results you're looking at a chart right now that illustrates which machine was faster in each test and as you saw previously the Cinebench and Geekbench score we certainly got higher results on our Hackintosh because of its higher spec CPU and RAM configuration but in terms of the memory test the 5k iMac Fusion Drive definitely beat out our Samsung SSD which is a fairly high performance SSD that's available right now but because it's not PCI based you're definitely going to find faster speeds and faster boot up times on the 5k iMac but again the gaming performance and overall graphical capabilities and horsepower on our 780 is definitely going to beat out the stock configuration of the R9 290X that's in the 5k iMacs now the one thing that the 5k beat out the Hackintosh is definitely with the Final Cut X rendering times and because of its OpenCL integration and the hardware that Apple has chosen uh, the architecture around it is fully optimized to run really harmoniously with Final Cut X but how However, if you are using the Adobe suite of products such as After Effects, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, or Lightroom, you are going to find a, a CPU that's a higher spec with more RAM and a good uh, powerful graphics card will always beat out the stock configuration of the 5K iMac. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is the specific price point of uh, how much it costs to make our Hackintosh. And what you're looking at right now is the parts list of all the individual components I used to make my Hackintosh. And you can see over here the three kind of main and most expensive components are definitely the CPU, the graphics card, and the monitor. Now the Dell P2815Q is actually one of the cheapest 4K displays that you can get out there. Now if you're willing to spend another two to three hundred dollars more, you can get a 4K monitor that is able to do 60 hertz refresh rate, uh, but certainly this is the best bargain for a 4K monitor right now. And all in all, when we add everything up, it's under two thousand dollars with everything included, which is pretty darn remarkable considering the the 5K iMac that we tested costs about $500 more. But on that, guys, that's really it. I know this was kind of an unorthodox kind of comparison, but I really want to do it because in the sense that uh, somebody might be interested in uh, perhaps building their own PC and they uh, kind of like some of the features of Mac OS X, they might do a dual boot system between Windows and OS X. And this kind of machine is certainly great for that. Uh, it runs uh, Windows uh, equally as great as it does Mac OS X. Um, obviously, you have the uh, option of upgrading each of those components uh, almost infinitely until obviously the next generation of uh, hardware comes out but uh, in terms of customization obviously the uh, PC that you're going to be building is infinitely customizable compared to the limited options you get with the iMac and certainly when you're configuring your iMac they, uh, Apple does charge a lot for the individual kind of upgrades so you can certainly get a lot for your money if you go down your own route and pick your own parts and uh, make your computer now there certainly is kind of a trade-off between the iMac and the Hackintosh uh, when you want uh, basically a computer and don't want to worry about building yourself and doing your own research in terms of which parts work best to run Mac OS X and which components work best together. Uh, it certainly can be an involved and time consuming process if you've never done it before. Versus an iMac it's so simple you just go into apple.com uh, select whichever version you like the best and uh, it'll come to your door shipped. You don't have to install the OS, you don't have to do any Anything. It's simple, straightforward, and fast right out of the box. 
but I would love to hear your thoughts on each of these kind of computers and uh, let me know what you guys think of the overall comparison as well. If you like the video, please make sure to give us a thumbs up. That really helps us out tremendously. And if you're interested in actually making your own Hackintosh, I actually have a tutorial up on the channel that will show you a real step-by-step -step guide on how to uh, basically convert your PC that would typically run Windows into a Hackintosh. There's a couple of requirements in terms of you need an Intel processor and fairly recent parts, but there's a lot of uh, different options when it comes to Hackintosh. So definitely check out that video if you're interested in that. But on that, we'll see you later and take care.